Hello beautiful creative friends, it's Belinda and I'm back today with another project to share with you for the Confessions of a Paper Addict design team. This is another Halloween layout of course being the month of October and today I'm working with the Messy Halloween Wreath Cut file. This was a brand new file released this month. Um, I have already gone ahead and cut that and backed it off camera. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that but I have used a really nice thick black glitter cardstock to cut the file and I've already backed these little pieces here. I've got a photo of my kids in their costumes when we're about to go ha um, trick-or-treating for Halloween last year in 2022 and because I want this layout I want to have this go in both of their albums. I am going to be doing my favorite little time-saving trick. I've also cut another file and I have this photo so I'm going to be creating two uh, almost identical layouts. I'll do one of them on I'll do one of them on camera the other one I'll do off camera but if you stick around to the end I'll have some close-up photos of that second layout. Now for this project today I'm going to be working with the Happy Halloween collection this was brand new from American Crafts this year that's what I've chosen I've backed the cut file with some of the papers from the 6x8 paper pad I've got the 12 by 12 paper pad and I've also got some embellishments to go with it. So that should be it for the introduction. Let's wrap it up, hop on fast forward and see this one come together. Okay, so to begin with, I am creating a mat for my white paper background. Every now and then I like to keep this process in because I know that I do have some new viewers coming to the channel and I leave this in just as a little bit of a, a helpful hint on how I do what I do. So when I am creating these photo mats or borders for my pages, I will always gut the inside of the patterned paper so that I can save that for another project. I usually leave about a one inch border around the outside and then my white paper gets trimmed down to uh, any yeah, around about 11 and a half inches sometimes I make it a little bit bigger sometimes I make it a little bit smaller it just depends on what kind of look I'm going for on the page background and for this one I am also going ahead and distressing the edges of that white back pattern sorry that white cardstock before I adhere it down. Um, I have learned through past experience that it's easier for me to distress the edges of the paper before I go and run it through my sewing machine than it is to try and do it after. Putting it through the sewing machine though, it does flatten it out a little bit. So I always come back in with my hands or a tool, my nails or a tool, and just rough up those edges again. Now for this particular one, um, I have, um, made my stitching about a quarter of an inch in from the border. Normally I like to stitch a little bit closer to the edge but this time because I really did want to add some nice distressing to that white paper, that white cardstock, I have given a bit, of, bit more space there behind the stitching so that I can tear some of those pieces up. I am going to add a little bit of mixed media to the background, not too much. I've got this uh, stencil, it's one of the mini stencils from uh, Tim Holtz Halloween release this year. It's got some really pretty um, funky sort of looking stars and dots. Um, it's sort of, yeah, I'm not sure how you would describe it, but um, for this layout I'm trying to sort of match the colour of the patterned paper that's on the border there. So I've grabbed one of the mini Distress Ink cubes. It's not an oxide, it's just an ink. Um, I think it's called Antique Linen maybe? I'm not quite sure. Um, if you're keen to know, let me know in the comments and I will, I will find out and I will let you know. Um, but I'm just going to add it in three places around the layout and I want to make sure that there is enough there so that you're going to see it from underneath the cut file. Um, I wasn't too particular about where I was placing the stencil down. I just knew that I wanted it in roughly in three places um, and sort of roughly aligned to where the elements are on that really cool messy circle or messy wreath cut file. Uh, the other bit of mixed media that I'm going to add, I'm going to add some splatters. Now I wanted a purple that was again kind of matching the purple that's in the background um, and my test swatch this is a prima watercolor palette my test swatch of the purple it was perfect it was exactly the color that I wanted um, but I think I probably should have put a little bit of the watercolor onto some 
uh, plastic and then watered it down even more because this is way too dark, but it is what it is. Um, and I'm also adding some Liquitex silver acrylic ink just for a little bit of sparkle there as well. So splattering that around, trying to stick to those three areas where I had the stenciling and then popping it aside to dry while I work on my photo background. So I do have this photo of my two kitties. Uh, this is before we went out trick or treating last year in 2022. I'm gonna keep the mats nice and simple here. So I've got a white mat behind the photo first, which I do to every single photo that goes on every single layout that I make. Um, and I do add, I do use white cardstock for that. I don't add it to the actual photo because I like that added layer of dimension and texture that it provides. I'm also going to add a black border. I really, it's fairly, it's a fairly thin black mat behind the white border. Um, and that's just, again, because it's a Halloween layout in my mind, dark and spooky so uh, that's where I went um, and then I'm going to finish off the patterned paper behind this with this orange striped paper this was in the 12 by 12 paper pad from the Happy Halloween collection now something that I have only just <laughs> realized with that collection is that not all of the papers that are in the 12 by 12 pad are in the 6, uh, six by 8 pad and that if you buy the papers individually, they're not the same as the papers that are in the 12 by 12 paper pad. So I was a little bit annoyed at that. Um, there were a couple of papers that I really would have liked to have in 12 by 12. And then there were a couple that I really would have liked to have had in the smaller format, but it is what it is. Um, so while I was making a silly complaint about paper, um, I added another textural layer behind the photo. So I had this, uh, it's like a, a fabric mesh and it's got puffy white pieces on it. It's kind of like snow, but to me it felt a little bit spooky. So I picked one that it was in a neutral color. It's kind of like a, a creamy color, um, gauze or mesh fabric mesh and then I have added that behind the photo and then I used my scissors to trim around that because there's no way that that was going to go through one of my paper trimmers and now I'm coming in and I'm adhering the cut file down so I have added some foam tape behind the elements of the the, the backed pieces of the cut file and I'm adding just a little bit of wet adhesive behind those as well because they are going down onto a little bit of mixed media and those are the only portions of the cut file that I'm actually going to adhere down so all of the circle the lines the, the lines of the wreath those pieces are not getting adhered down at all um, number one I didn't want to fuss around with adding adhesive behind each of those tiny little lines and number two it just helps to add a little bit of movement I feel um, because some of the pieces are stuck down it's it's giving it a little bit of dimension and not adhering everything down it it helps to give it a bit more depth and a bit bit of movement to the layout so here I am coming in with my photo tucking it in underneath the wreath and because I do have that very very textural element element behind the photo I'm using some of the Helmar 450 uh, quick dry adhesive it's nice and thick so it's going to get in between all the little layers of that that foam or that gauze um, and it's quick drying so I don't have to wait forever for it to to grab hold. And now we just reach the final bit. This is nice and quick this time because I'm not going crazy with embellishing. I'm just going to add a few little bits and pieces around the wreath. So I'm starting off by adding that little witch's hat to the ghosty. I thought that was such a cute little addition. Um, I have these spiderweb that I have die cut out of some holographic cardstock. The little die cut there which says Halloween, that is going to be the title. I'm not adding a year to this. I'm not adding any journaling to this. It's pretty straightforward. This was their costumes and that was it. Um, this, is, this is to go into the kids' album. So there's, there's more journaling on layouts that have gone into the family album. Um, I'm going to add a couple of little die cut pieces down to down into this bottom left cluster. This trick or treat piece is a transparent. It's like a, almost like on a vellum, um, and I wasn't too sure where it was going to go, but it is going to sit there underneath that Halloween title. I'm going to tuck another little pumpkin puffy in behind the ghost, and I will also add a 
I foam backed another bat onto the wreath. And I think that is about it for this layer. So if you stick around for the close-up photos, which are coming in just a moment, you will see some photos of this layout that I have completed and also the layout that I completed for my son, which is just, it's the same design, just different elements and a slightly different color scheme. Uh, so uh, that's about it. Here's the close-up photos now. I will leave it there and say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.